Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful day for a brand new lesson. This is 4.3. We're going to talk about box plots and IQR. And in order to do that, we need to know a little thing called a five number summary. We're going to use this information here to help us draw a box plot. And we're going to look at the distribution of data represented in quartiles. So this is another piece of information that is new for us. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our things to know, we have what we call a box plot or also known as a box and whisker plot. This is a graph used with simple data sets and it helps us to identify skew. And we look at this um, based on quartiles. Remember that quartiles means four pieces. You can think of four quarters making a dollar or four quarters in a game of some sort. Okay. And then we have a five number summary. This is used to describe the data set and you'll see in the example what those pieces of the five number summary are. Okay, and then I did attach some steps to finding a five number summary, so these are located on your notes. Uh, please continue to refer back to them. I'm not gonna talk about them now. We're just gonna uh, get a glimpse of them right here, and then we're gonna use these to find the five number summary. And then additionally, we have our steps to drawing a box plot. So I'll talk about this as we actually draw our box plot. So it will be helpful if you do have a uh, graphing calculator. I'm going to use the TI-84 to show you the steps. So if you have a different calculator, um, you might have to do a search on how to use this functionality on your calculator. I am just showing the TI-84. All right. We have also what we call the interquartile range or the IQR. And this is simply taking the Q3 minus the Q1 value. This is where the middle 50% of the data occurs. Our first or lower quartile is where 25% of the data occurs. And then our third or upper quartile is where 75% of the data occurs. Okay, so go ahead and pause if you need to get that written down. All right, so our first thing to do is figure out how to create a box plot, and it is a little bit different if we're doing it by hand when we have an even data set and when we have an odd data set. So I'm gonna show you how to do both. Uh, starting with the even data set, remember our first step is that we need to be in order from least to greatest, which I have on both of these sets of data for you, okay? And then we can start plugging away at our five number summary. These are the pieces, the minimum, the first quartile, lower quartile, the median, the third quartile, the max, and then we can calculate the IQR. The IQR is not part of the five number summary, but it's really easy to do once you have these two values here, the Q3 and the Q1. So if we take a look, our minimum data value is uh, this five, or I'm sorry, this one minimum value is one and then our maximum value is 10. So that is really easy to see right off the bat. Okay, then we can easily calculate our median. Remember, if we have a even amount of data, we're actually gonna have two middle numbers. So I would go ahead and circle these two middle numbers. If I add these up and divide by two, I would get 5.5. So now I can go ahead and label my median. 5.5. Okay, so the first quartile, this is actually the median of the first half of our data set. So when you have an even data set, you are sharing these two values in the middle to figure out that middle number. So when you find your first half of the data set, remember to include the left side of your middle two numbers. So the first half is actually one through five. And then now we want to find the median of this set. And this is a odd set, one through five. So we actually have just one single number and that is three. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the second half of data. We need to use that right value of our middle two numbers and find the second half of our data set. And again, we have an odd amount, six through 10. So our middle number here is going to be eight. Okay, now that we have our Q3 and our Q1, we can take eight minus three, and that will give us five. All right, on our steps to 
drawing a box plot. It says draw a number line. Boom, I have that done right here. And then it wants us to begin with a value less than our smallest and a little bit more than our largest. So a value less than one, an easy one to use would be zero. And then a value a little bit bigger than 10. It helps if you have an even amount so you can split this down the middle and make even plot points. So I'm gonna use 12, okay? And the reason I wanted to use an even number here is because I am including that zero, so this is actually an odd amount of numbers. So zero through 12, half of 12 is gonna be six. Okay, and then now I can create my space. Remember, you wanna try and make your hash marks as evenly spaced out as possible. That way you get a true representation of the shape. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four and five, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right, and then step two, it says draw small vertical lines above each value of your five number summary. We can find those here. So my minimum value is one. Let me go ahead and label these just so you can see it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 and 11. All right, then let's go down the line. Our Q1 is three. Our median is 5.5, so that would just go down the middle here. Q3 is eight, and then our maximum value is 10. And then it says to create a box using the middle three values, that is our Q1, our median, and our Q3. Create a rectangular box, and then we extend the whiskers to our minimum and our maximum points. And now we have our box plot. Okay, and then the way that we look at the spread of the distribution is based on the lengths of our whiskers and also the lengths of our two rectangles that are split in the middle here. And it looks like this side is as even as this side. They look roughly about the same length and shape as do our whiskers. So this would actually be a normal distribution. All right, when we have a odd data set, we wanna do the same thing. We can easily find our minimum value, that is one. Our maximum value is nine. Okay, in this case, we have a singular middle number and that is five, so that is our median. Okay, when we find the first half of our data set, we did not share this five with both sides. So we are just going to find the first half of data without including that middle number. And then now we're left with a even set in our first half. So the median is gonna be these middle two numbers and that will give us 2.5. So that is my Q1. And then my second half of data is this six through nine. And then seven and eight divided by two is gonna give me 7.5, so we can write that in. And then my IQR, 7.5 minus 2.5, that is gonna give me five as well. And then we have this number line, we wanna start with a value a little bit below and a value a little bit above, that could be 10. Smack dab down the middle will be five, and we got one, two, three, and four, six, seven, eight and nine. So let's do one, two, three and four, six, seven, eight and nine. Very good. So then we wanna draw our five tick marks using these values here. So we have at our minimum one, Q1 is 2.5, median is five, Q3 is 7.5 and our final one is nine. I use the three in the middle to make my rectangle. And then I extend my whiskers. And this one looks like a normal distribution. Also, this box is approximately the length of this box and our whiskers are extending out at the same amount. Okay, so this is also a normal distribution. Now, you can have a normal distribution here in this box and this whisker might be longer than this one. Okay, that can indicate a skew. The majority of our skew is gonna be found in this little box here. 
but sometimes the whisker helps identify a skew if our box, our interquartile range is evenly distributed. Okay, so all it takes is looking at a few different examples, which you guys will do in the coursework. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next example. Okay, uh, this graphic here uh, before the example just represents the quartiles. Remember from your minimum to your Q1, this is where the first 25% happens. Q1 to the median is your next 25, and then your next 25, and your next 25. If you went from minimum to maximum, all the way across from here to here, that would be 100%. You would be adding up all those. Now that interquartile range from here to here, this is where the middle 50% of your data occurs. So that is important to remember. The middle 50% of the data, you might see some questions uh, centered around that. So make sure you keep an eye on this chart right here. All right, for example number one, we have uh, two different sets of data. We got, uh, we're talking about how many hits in around a hacky sack. We have a data set from the Humphreys hackers and we have a data set from the Soul Sackers. We've recorded the same amount of data from each one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got 16 pieces of data from each of those. Now this is where the calculator is gonna come in handy. We want the five number summary from both of these sets of data. Okay, so go ahead and pop out your calculator now. I'm gonna do so with mine. I'm gonna show you guys uh, a couple of things here. All right, so I went ahead and got my calculator up. Let's go ahead and reset our data and restore our defaults. Remember that is second plus 712. And then to restore the defaults, we do second plus 722. Okay, so we always want to start with a fresh calculator because maybe the kid before you did some wacky stuff on there and it starts acting weird. This is a good way to get back on track. Okay, so the first thing to do is enter in our two lists of data, and we do that by hitting the stat button, which is right here, and then we go to edit. Uh, actually, let me pop this out so you guys can see this. All right, there we go, pardon the technical difficulties. All right, so we hit the stat button. We're gonna go to edit, so that's option number one. And then if you have a list here, let's go ahead and clear this out. Remember, you can do that by going up to the list name, hitting the clear button, and then pushing the down arrow. So I'm gonna enter in Humphreys Hackers into list one, and then Soul Sackers into list two. Go ahead and pause the video here and enter in your data as well. All right, welcome back. So I got Humphreys Hackers entered into list one and Soul Sackers entered into list two. Now there's two different ways we can go about this. Okay, we've used the one var stats before and we do that by going to stat and then we choose the second option to the right, uh, calculate, and then if we choose one var stats, we hit enter, okay. Um, if you need to change your list, you hit the second button and then down here on the number pad are your lists. Let's go ahead and calculate list one. Okay, if we do the one var stats, remember we found the mean and the standard deviation before. However, the five number summary is tabbed all the way down at the bottom. So you just continue clicking using this down arrow. And here you have the min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max. So your five number summary is located right here. Okay, another way for us to view the five number summary and actually get a snapshot at what the box plot looks like is we can draw the box plot on the calculator. Okay, and I provided those steps to you as well in the coursework, but I'm gonna show you how we do that here. Okay, the first thing we need to do is turn on our stat plot and we do that by hitting the second button and then hitting the Y equals button, that gives us the stat plot. Uh, right. Okay, and then you should see the screen. You notice how it says stat plots, plot one is turned off. We wanna actually turn that on. So we choose option number one and we hit enter. 
right now it is off okay if you see the black box behind the word off so we need to be highlighted on the word on which we currently are this is where the blinking cursor is and we simply hit enter and then now that will turn the stat plot on okay we need to change the type okay and if you look here you have two different types of box plots one has these little dots we want to choose the one without the dots so we use the right arrow to tab over to it highlight it and then we hit enter and now it is selected okay we're gonna choose list one okay this is um, our first list we're gonna create the box plot first for Humphreys hackers and then if you have a color calculator you can change uh, the color of your box plot simply by tabbing over okay from here I want you guys to quit and go to the main screen and we can do that by using the second button and then the mode next to it has this text quit right above if we hit that it brings us back to the main screen okay and before we draw the box plot I do want to show you how we can sort our data okay so you see this blue word list right above the stat button we'll use the second and then we'll go to the list okay and then you have names ops and math if we go over to ops we have sort A and sort D. Sort A is for ascending. We want our data from least to greatest. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter on option one and we're gonna sort our list one. So we have sort ascending and then we need to hit the second button and choose list one. So once we do that, we can hit enter and then it will say done. Let's go ahead and sort list two while we're at it. So remember that's second and stat, so we can get the list. We're gonna go to ops, so right arrow to ops. We're gonna choose sort A for ascending, and then we're gonna hit second and number two for list two. And then you'll see that word done. Okay, now let's actually go back into our edit uh, list, so stat and then edit. And now we can see that our data has been organized from least to greatest okay so that's one way you can sort your list um, and make things a little bit easier for you so let's go back to the main screen second and quit okay we can clear this out it always helps to see a fresh screen and now that we already set our uh, stat plot to turn on we have our data entered in we just want to view the box plot so there's this button here in the middle called zoom we're gonna hit zoom and then if you scroll all the way down to option number nine you're gonna see the word zoom stat and this is gonna pull up our box plot so we'll choose option number nine and then now we have our box plot okay we can actually see the five number summary the values aren't listed until we start tracing on the box plot so if you look to the right of the zoom button it says trace we're gonna hit the trace button and then now we can view all of these values here. So we have our minimum value, we have our Q1, we have our median, we have our Q3, and our max. Okay, so this is one way to view it and get an idea of the shape and distribution in that box plot. Um, but to draw it, we know how to draw it by hand, so all we need is that five number summary. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here. I'm gonna let you guys draw your um, box plots for Humphreys Hackers and for Soul Sackers, and then we'll talk about these questions down below. All right. All right, welcome back. So if we take a look, this is what our box plot looks like for Humphreys Hackers, and then we have our box plot for soul saggers so the distribution if you look this rectangle kind of looks like this rectangle so i would call this a normal distribution we have our median here at seven okay and then our q3 is at 9.5 our q1 is at five if we look at soul sackers this whole rectangle here in the middle is much much longer than this side on the left and then we also have this really long whisker over here on the right so we can tell that the soul sackers is skewed more to the right our spread is more on the 
uh, right side above this median of six. So Humphreys does have the higher median, but here at Soul Saggers, we do have some high uh, values of hits in a round of Haggy Sack. So our question here says, describe the distributions for both teams. Are they skewed or are they normal? Okay, so the Humphreys Hackers do have a normal distribution and the Soul Saggers are skewed right. Okay. This means Humphrey hackers, their data is not that far off from the meaning. Okay, but soul sackers is spread out to the right of the median. Okay. Uh, we also have which team typically scores more in a round. Okay, so we want to think um, not so much of the average, but more so the median, because remember, the median is our true measure of center. If we use the average, this guy over here who scored 20 is actually pulling up that average, but based on the median, uh, more people are typically scoring around six hits in a round. So how would we answer which team typically scores more in a round? So here we would want to choose Humphreys Hackers because they typically score more in a round as they have the higher median. Um, we have more people scoring um, around seven hits in a round as opposed to six hits in a round. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. All right, so which team scored more on average? If we are thinking about the average, uh, we would want to say uh, Soul Sackers because this guy right here pulled up that average. They actually have a higher average than Humphreys Hackers. All right, let's go to the next example. Okay, here we have a stem and leaf plot. So we wanna create a box plot um, and then answer these following questions down here. Remember the main thing about the stem and leaf plot is you always wanna look at the key. So this says four slash eight equals 48,000. So this four is actually in the 10 thousandths place and this eight from the leaf is the 1,000. So four and an eight would be 48,000, meaning this three and this two would be a 32,000. All right, so go ahead and enter that data. Remember, all of these are points. You got 32,000, 42,000, 46,000, 48,000, and so on. Go ahead, enter all of those into your calculator and get your five number summary. Uh, pause the video here and then come back after you've drawn your box plot. Okay, welcome back. So here I have my box plot. I actually went ahead and put the percentages here for you um, to show, remember this is that first 25, then the next, the next, and the next, and I included some of this data here. Okay, so our inner quartile range, uh, remember is this 58,000 minus the 46,000, so that gives us a total of 12,000 okay and then it asks us also what percentage of monthly revenue was below 51,000 so if this is the 51 I am looking for below so what percentage of the data is below 50 we got a 25 and a 25 percent here so we are looking at 50 percent and then part C, what percentage of monthly revenue was greater than 58? So if this is 58 right here, we are looking for how much is greater. That is 25%. And our final one is between which two values is approximately 50% of the middle data contained. Remember I talked about this when I showed that graphic. Um, from Q1 to Q3, this is where our middle 50% is. So we are between 46,000 and 58,000. Okay, so this is how we answer some of these questions here by using these quartiles. All right, and then I have one last example for you. Um, this is a following data set talking about life expectancy by country. Uh, go ahead and pause the video here and then come back and see if your answers match up to what I have. All right, welcome back. So here I have my box plot, okay? We have our low of 49, high of 77. It looks like we are skewed left, okay? And our inner quartile range here is 17. 
Um, what percentage of people did not live past 59? So 59, we're looking at everyone below that, and that is 25%. Uh, what percentage of people lived longer than 59 but less than 75? That is also 25%. And then how many live past 75? Um, that would be from our 75 to 77. That is 50% of our data. Okay, so we are skewed left. Okay, so that is all I have for you. Please attempt the uh, coursework. It is great practice. Um, and if you have any questions, again, please reach out. I am sure somebody is willing to help you. Thanks again for watching. Uh, tune in for the next one. Peace out.